Now we're coming. Now we're coming. So yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you all and welcome and thanks a lot for tuning in to our first interview today, basically. Uh, our first live interview in, in, in general. Uh, Lauren Passarelli will join us soon. In the meantime, I, in the meantime, I thought I'd give you a brief summary of what's going on at Tegel Audio at the moment. And yeah, since you're here, you probably already know today is the first episode of a new interview series. Uh, we are planning to have an interview twice a month with different people from different backgrounds, uh, working in different fields of music. And if you want to stay updated, I recommend, or we recommend, uh, to check our socials and or Absolutely. our website. Absolutely. And speaking of socials, as you might have seen, there's a new uh, t-shirt giveaway running until Tuesday next week. Uh, if you want to take part uh, and win a t-shirt, one of these, um, then you can check uh, on Instagram, for example, the MythEQ 500 series, our next um, 500 series device, uh, the name announcement of that on our Instagram profile. And um, I recommend, yeah, this is it. And we had an incredible uh, response for our survey for the MIFI-Q. Uh, everybody uh, voted, everybody was really eager to, to name our brand new uh, 500 series EQ and it was amazing. Uh, we thank everyone who participated. It was actually uh, really surprising how many people were emailing us like, I really have this idea, it's amazing. And we, we noted all of them, but we did have to pick one in the end. And so we're very proud to announce the MIFI-Q coming in the second quarter of yeah. 2022. Yeah, we're super yeah. excited to tell you more about this beautiful EQ. Yeah. And yeah, um, if you want to be one of the first to get the news, uh, there's a new Facebook group if you haven't heard already, and newsletter, and you know how this stuff exactly. works, I guess. Exactly, yeah. So, um, enough, yeah. enough about us? Yeah, enough, enough about, about us, us, I guess that's, yeah. uh, that's yeah. enough. For, um, so yeah, let's introduce uh, our first guest in this interview series. Uh, today we're talking with Lauren Passarelli. Yeah. Uh, she's not only a performing songwriter, recording engineer and published author, but also a professor of guitar at the renowned Berkeley, Berkeley. University, uh, Berkeley College, College of, of Music. Music. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, uh, if you don't know anything about Lauren, do check her out. She's amazing. Uh, everything she does is awesome. She's an incredible guitar player. Uh, we're very, you know, we're looking forward a lot to hearing more from her and seeing all her secrets and tips that she can share with us, you know. Uh, yeah, Lauren was also the first woman to graduate from Berkeley's uh, guitar performance program in 1982. And this is actually why I was, I was, I asked those guys, can I really do this interview? Because she's a Beatles expert. And you know, if you do not like the Beatles, maybe you should stop watching this, this <laughs> interview right now, because this, there's going to be a lot of Beatles talk. Yeah. So, yeah. If you guys have any questions, please feel free. Ask any stuff. Uh, I know she she she's gonna she, she's a very interesting person. You're gonna have a lot of interesting questions as well. I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, should should we should we? We are waiting for Laura. Actually. We're waiting for the journey. Laura is coming. Laura is coming. Yeah. Laura is coming. Uh, the time I, zone. I can do the elevator music. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about music, which kind of music Lauren make, you know, it's a guitarist. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, guys, just, just um, if you check on our website, you can see on our news page, we announced, on our, pre on our previous interview with Andrea Sicecki, right? Yeah. Uh, we also mentioned uh, Lauren. Andrea's was also amazing. And then do check her website as well, uh, but just go on Lauren's website, check her Instagram. All of the things that she's doing are amazing. Uh, we're gonna mention some of her her, uh, her stuff from Instagram and stuff, and like we had a great time just checking it out here in our office, yeah. and I'm sure you guys are gonna have a good time too. She's really a, a very interesting uh, artist. I think yeah, uh, you should and, check and, it out. Yeah, and very talented. I think. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to reach. Long no problem. Time. Yeah, <laughs> we have time. We have time. You know, it's a chill mm -hmm. night. Um, what else can we tell everyone? Mm. Oh, here we go. We have, we have something? Yeah. Yo, Lauren. Lauren. Uh, hello. Hi, Lauren. Hello, hello. Hi. Can you see me? Yes. We can, we can see you. We can see you, yes. 
We can see you finally. I was I was on live. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Watching, trying to figure out how to get on. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I mean, we made it. We're here. We're doing it. Uh, should, yeah, thank you very much for yeah, joining us. For joining. Really appreciate it. Uh, it's our pleasure, really. Um, we were really looking forward to this. We were all. Today was Lauren Passarelli day here in our office. We were the whole day just checking her stuff, and everybody was like, "Whoa, this! She's amazing! Look at her playing the guitar!" And yeah, and now we're we're really excited to be here talking to you now. I wish I was there visiting and meeting you in person. Tell oh, me. Give us a call in Berlin. Nice. Just give us a call. That's great. Yeah. Um, so I didn't, I didn't get your names. Oh, sorry. Yeah, my name oh, yes. is my name is Julian yes. or uh, Julian. Yeah. Oh, Julian, we've spoken. You've helped me so much. Thank yeah. You. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he he helps everyone out. He's a re really cool guy. I am Gabriel myself, and yeah, we have never spoken Gabriel. actually before. Yes. Gabriel and, and Julian. Yeah. I just heard you're the Beatle guy. I love that. That's true. That is true. That is true. <laughs> I've yeah. learned everything from the Beatles, you know, the, how to write songs, how to mm. sing, how to perform, how to be funny. Okay, okay, now, now you're just taking words away from, 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 from the questions, <laughs> <laughs> because I was, gonna, I, was gonna, I was gonna ask you exactly this question, yeah, yes, I can imagine. And, uh, but anyway, we're gonna get to that, we're gonna get to that. Do you wanna ask the first question? Uh, okay. Go for it. So, um, this question will also be, I think, part of the, uh, the news post thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, could you tell us something about your audio setup, maybe, in general, and of course, uh, like how, how the VTRC, I think you know the VTRC, uh, you own the VTRC, uh, how it helped you in, uh, in your, in your process, yeah. basically, of making music. I have uh, two Apollos and a laptop and a bigger screen and some speakers and a couple of pieces of outboard gear, but I was really looking for a recording channel because, you know, I just love, like when you're playing through a guitar amp or you're setting up your microphone uh, live, you know, you can tweak and get in there and actually play with the parameters to have it support what you're about to play and what you're about to do. It makes it so much easier to play. If you get the right sound, it feels more inspiring to sing. It feels more inspiring to play. When I was touring with different Beatle bands and solo Beatles music bands, uh, as soon as I got the right sound, it was like the part played itself, you know, because mm -hmm. it was so smooth and it was so satisfying to hear. So I wanted a recording channel so I could get in there and actually tweak those different knobs and actually feel the knobs and play and feel the difference as I played or sang what it was going to do to my voice and my guitar. I don't get that same feeling when I play with a mouse and instantly I was able to feel and hear an incredible difference between just using a plug-in. There's just something about a physical piece of gear that just blows me away and ever since I was 11 years old I've like wanted a real recording studio, you know. Mm -hmm. I just knew I was writing way too many songs to just pay for recording time and I couldn't wait to get in there and actually paint with sound. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that's a nice expression. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we, uh, we, we uh, actually like we here, we, we tend to, um, when we're marketing uh, audio, you know, we tend to imagine, to, to do this association between, uh, you know, color, the sensorial aspect of it all. And we, I think that's that's what we're all looking for, right? Like looking at the, the right color, the, like you said, like this, this um, this inspiring uh, atmosphere that you get from from the sound and uh, yeah yeah because how the sound is just I mean uh, difficult to describe and it's difficult to yeah I think to to bring across what you mean so yeah terms of color and these things are very very good for that yeah, yeah. well especially since so many of my friends who are great recording engineers that either graduated from Berkeley or teach at Berkeley like. Rob Harkness or Leanne Unger, uh, Jonathan Weiner, Dave Moulton, uh, recently Matt Rafino, John Paterno. Everybody mm. says to me, get the sound right mm. before you hit record. Yeah. You know, it's so much easier yeah. to play with and to mix and to have fun with when you love the sound as it's going in yeah. to your recording. And I have two recording channels because I bought one on eBay and then got the newer one. So I have like the older one and the newer one. And it's really fun to set up a mic, 
get my guitar amp the way I like it, put that mic through one recording channel and put my voice through another one. So I've recorded a lot of songs recently as I'm recording these new songs uh, through those two, and I'm super happy with the results. I mean, I don't know how you call just the bus compressor cream. It seems like everything is cream. It's yeah. just cream. <laughs> But it's also interesting, one thing that you mentioned, um, like to get the sound right before you start recording. Because I, I would say nowadays there's, there's a lot of this thinking like, oh no, we can fix it later, we can edit, we can cut it, we can, we can EQ it after we record it. And I, I, I think, I think it's, it's very nice what you do. And I, I also love how you, like, you uh, cross this boundary between the musician and the producer and you're both things together and that I think gives you all this flexibility to know exactly what you want, go after what you want. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, that's, uh, that's like uh, all the folks that say it's really hard to wear all those, sh those hats at the same time. But yeah. uh, I don't know. I've just always had a vision as what I'd like to do. And Stephen Weber's another one who's just been such a great uh, encourager. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's, he's admired that I could keep my focus mm -hmm. from that first idea through to a finished record. And I don't know... It doesn't seem like different um, jobs for me, you know, it just, it's not hard to separate those things, it's just getting it right at every stage, and I find that fascinating, yeah. take a little guitar riff, turn it into a finished record, it's yeah. just, I'm still excited to do it today, I started doing this and playing with little tape recorders and things when I was 11 years old. <laughs> very nice, very nice, very nice. Um, I, okay. just turned, I just turned 62, like, uh, you know, it's like... Well, you, turn 62. Well, you, you do not look 62, just, just, <laughs> just to let you know. Um, uh, there, no. this, this question, I did not write this question, so it's a really okay. hard question, okay? okay. I, would, I, I, would, I would feel challenged pre being presented this question, but I'm going to ask you this, the, the following question. Can you describe the most important aspects of your work in three short sentences? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's probably the writing and getting it right to tailor it to... Mm feel like it's surprising me, you know? A lot of people say start off with a great idea, I was like, you wanted three sentences. Um, <laughs> I should have had the written interview in front of me because I put it in three concise sentences. Um, well, yeah, just how important it is for me to get the ideas out, get them recorded well, and just share them because it's fun to do. Very nice, very nice. So, okay, uh, we, I think we have one more, uh, one last bit more technical setup question um, before we go to the others. Um, so, can you say something how you're, because I think there are a lot of people that are starting or want to get started with production and with music writing and these things. And if they are like me, they sit at home, uh, it's, yes often browse through YouTube or something and they don't know where to start, for example. Uh, so, how would you say, um, what helped you the most during your, um, during your evolv evolving of your, your production technique or something? Like how... Not being afraid. Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I think I should... I think well, should not... You catch it. I'm not sure if I if you if you got to finish your whole question. Yes, yes. I uh, yeah, uh, base I, I um, posted com more complicated than necessary. Mm -hmm. Basically, how did your production or mixing technique uh, evolve since you started? What helped you? And yeah, what? Yeah. Well, I'm primarily self-taught, so I still have mm -hmm. a ton to learn. It's just I really enjoy picking the brains of the folks who know how to do it well. So I'm around a lot of great people, like I mentioned, Leanne Unger and Jonathan Weiner at Berkeley, and Dave Moulton was there for a while. And um, there are folks that I just write to. I mean, Rafa uh, Sardinia has been very kind in writing back to me, and Matt Ruffino and John Paterno, and I'm just thankful for the questions that get answered. The biggest part is that I was craving for the longest time to have access to be at sessions or to watch videos on how mm -hmm. these great folks work. And for decades, I longed for Produce Like a Pro, puremix.net, mix with the masters. And then all of a sudden, there was this giant explosion of everybody online giving you all these fantastic tips and stuff. So I'm grateful to all those folks. Uh, 
Warren Hewitt, all these excellent teachers and very generous with their information. It's been so helpful. Um, that's pretty much what's done it. I read a lot of books and I listen to a lot of records, but a lot of times you just can't get in there and you don't know exactly what's happened. And a lot of these wonderful websites and teaching YouTube channels will take you step by step, you know, from start to finish. Here's the band. This is how we're going to mic them. This is how they're going to plug in. This is what they're plugging into. This is what we're setting it at. This is why we're doing it. Here's the great drum sound. This is how we got it. And right through to the finished mix. In fact, Pure Mix even has comparison mixes where they'll do, like, here's the song. Here's the series. Mm -hmm. And they record friends like my, my uh, student from years ago, Will Knox. He's a great songwriter and performer. And they'll take one of his songs called Lifeboats and they'll put it through, like, 10, 12 different engineers, and everybody's listening to it for the first time, and you watch them mix it from the very beginning, like first hearing to the mix, and it's just stunning how many different things happen to make it sound excellent, and how everybody has a different way of achieving sometimes a similar way to fix a problem or to uh, take it in a new direction. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, would, you, would you say that the, it, basically that it, it's really important to not be afraid of asking questions, looking for the, the answers, either by asking friends, getting friends in the area, or like looking for YouTube tutorials or whatever it is. Would you say so? Absolutely. I mean, these days, you know, you could pretty much Google anything and find an answer yeah. and find a chat and yeah. find a discussion and hear examples <laughs> of what's yeah. going on. You know, another great channel I just recently uh, came across was Alec Britz. He's a wonderful recording engineer and he's got a great studio mm -hmm. over on your continent and um, it's just fantastic to uh, to watch the different tips from his channel as well yeah yeah I'm glad yeah um, any more technical Tell questions any more technical, technical questions or should we move on to the <laughs> last technical questions I think yeah okay no, no, no questions asked yet Giovanni no questions yet no, no question. I really uh, enjoyed the conversation. Guys, you, can, you cannot see well. him. You cannot see him, but none of this will be happening without Giovanni. He's yeah. behind the <laughs> behind the scenes. You know. Um, okay. So now um, we would like to ask a question. You probably have been asked this question before, mm -hmm. uh, but we feel that it's really important that we ask this question that we bring this subject up. Uh, in two days, uh, February eleventh, that's going to be the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. Unfortunately, the music business, especially the production side, is still quite dominated uh, by male engineers. Can you tell us something about your experience in this field as a woman, how that, how that uh, is for you? Well, thankfully, it's just been on a personal level. You know, they don't get political or gender mm -hmm. biased. It's just, we like the music, we like the players. Uh, yeah, that's how it should be. We work together yeah. because we have mutual respect for each other. And, yeah enjoy each other's company. I mean, I'm just a big believer in fun, you know, so I'm trying to create opportunities uh, to just do things with more people. There are certain instruments like bass and drums that when you grow up playing them, they automatically encourage you to play with other people. But guitar and piano can be very solitary and you yeah. can do your own thing. And then I started to learn all kinds of other instruments and very often on my recordings, I'm playing all the parts and doing everything myself. And I love doing that for my vision, but it's so fun to go into a studio or have friends come over and do things together. So I always wanted more company in this. Mm -hmm. I always thought, even my childhood friends when we were in bands, we'd all grow up and we'd be professional musicians. But not everybody goes that direction. So my tip is, if you're feeling lonely for company, just reach out. Invite people to come over or to send you tracks. You want to do everything safely these days. But, you know, like encourage people to share and play a part on one of your songs. People like to be asked. Yeah. And so all these other players are looking for an opportunity. Then I realized, well, geez, I'm the one with all the songs and all the ideas. All I have to do is put out some in invitations. And I'm a lot less lonely. <laughs> <laughs> That's really nice. That's nice. Yeah. The, the power of music, of bringing people together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've met some great folks over the years. Even buying and selling gear is so much fun. And yeah, I've met yeah. people that we stay in touch with Craigslist and all those great places. So Reverb.com, you know, it's just, it's just fun. 
And yeah. especially, as you were mentioning the Beatles there, you know, I find that Beatle people are quite great people. Yeah. You know, they've got yeah. good hearts, yeah. very good hearts, as all of those lads say. And so uh, when you meet Beatle people and the music, I mean, that's just an added benefit, especially today, because yeah. this is February 9th. This was the very first Ed Sullivan performance, you know, we're talking 58 yeah, years yeah, ago, but right. I was four years old and I was there with my plastic guitar going, the Beatles conquered oh, America. Yeah, yeah, this is what I'm on the planet to do. Oh, yeah. oh, you know. And they were so generous about it. They're like, we're not the best musicians. We're not saying we're anything special. We're just having fun. It's good for a laugh. We'll just see how long this lasts. Yeah. And if we can do it, anybody can do it. And I just yeah. thought, yeah, I'd like to do it too. Nice. nice. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. Nice story. Um, it's music for everybody, right? So enjoy. Just find you whatever your toys are, whatever you're recording with. I mean, I, I made my first album in 1989 with Cindy Brown. She's a friend from college. She played keyboards. We started a record label together. It's an album under the name Too True, T-T-W-O-T-R-U. Uh -huh. And we put out two albums, uh, Among the Ruins and Shadow Language. And that first album, Among the Ruins, we literally made with toys. I mean, like toys. You know? mm -hmm. A half-inch, eight-track, uh, reel-to-reel, a Tascam. Oh, wow. 38 and um, you know little m35 test cam mixer with like a little extension thing from some company with all these virtual instruments wow. and i remember the the mp and &E department saying well in theory we have been told you can use a sync tone <laughs> and use some virtual tracks and have synthesizers and drum machines playing in time and we were like we've done it we've done it <laughs> <laughs> Because she was a computer whiz, she's still a computer whiz, awesome. and she was able to figure all that stuff out, and it was yeah. fantastic, you know, awesome. so I would love to go back and digitize all that stuff, but we didn't know, put on another blank reel of tape, and dump in all those virtual tracks, all those tracks are gone, because they were in the moment, you yeah. know, gone the next day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Laurie, if, every, if everything else does not work out, you can always become like a cartoon dubber, I think you, you have a hidden talent there. You know, with the, with the oh, older voice, that was, that was really nice. Really People nice. have told me that, right? Yeah. It's like, Miss Hoover, can I have another worm? You see, oh, no, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, guys, Lauren is, she, so she's a professor, she's a producer, musician, and she can do a lot of voices. Okay, okay. That's all ear training, really, you know. When I grow up, I either want to be a principal or a caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you should definitely come to, when you're in Berlin, let us know, come to, to the office, do the voice impressions, we have some beers, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I want to hear the reverb in person. I almost cried listening to how beautiful your reverb was when I uh, heard right it there, uh, yeah. online on the reverbs. Yeah. Oh my God, on the YouTube channels, I was like, that's amazing. Yeah, 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 we, it, it, it's, it's a really beautifully sounding... Um, uh, we were, yeah, we were, we're the Ramsay Machina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's um, so fantastic. Now, what were you going to say about the Beatles game? Okay, um, okay, actually, uh, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the Beatles then. I will, <laughs> Yulin is here, he will help curb my enthusiasm a little because <laughs> if I get too much into it, we might, this is not an exclusive, exclusively a Beatles talk. Uh, well, the thing it's is, so uh, we were all wondering. Like, as a Beatles expert, what, what is a Beatles program like? What is a Beatles course like in, in Berkeley? In... Oh, well, I started the two that we have. Uh -huh. uh, one was Beatle Guitar Lab. So there's eight students in a guitar lab. And I teach them the sensibilities and the ear trainings to get the sound, to get the influence to speak, have their guitar speak and sing like they're playing the actual Beatle parts. Um... Like, a lot of us... Well, like I said, I'm 62. So when I grew up, there was very few good books out to learn from and very few sheet music that actually had the actual parts that you want to play. So yeah. you listen to one of your favorite records, you go, oh, I can't wait to buy that music. I want to learn how to play that song. And you see that it just says a basic G chord when it's really a G major 7-9 
and it's on the you know different fret and yeah. it's like it doesn't sound the same to me yeah. like i would have to use my ear to get the exact voicings and the exact feeling and do the pre-bend and the let go and slide it or was it a slur or was it played with slide you start to hear all these individual specifics that make the sound what it is so i felt like it was very important for anybody learning how to play just learning how to play to play really good music and try because you're learning how to speak nobody would grow up under a rock and try to learn german or learn english it's not like you're six months old and they stick you in a box for 20 years and say here's a thesaurus here's a dictionary uh learn how to talk learn how to think learn how to make senses we listen to every person that's in our lives as we grow up we learn each language one word at a time and we say it exactly how they say it so if you do that with music and you do that with like for me 14 different guitar players i can make things sound like a bunch of different folks when i need that little style and i want it to sound like james taylor or paul mccartney or john lennon or george harrison or eric clapton or jeff beck you know i can get in step in their shoes play a little bit with those sensibilities I'll give you an example. In my Beatles recording ensemble, we try to make the sound, or used to make the sound, of every single instrument, every component of the record, sound like the record. So they had to sing like them, the piano player had to play the exact thing, same rhythm, at the same place, with the same velocity, the same energy. Like if you're playing as if you're angry all the time, it's not sounding like the Beatles, right? Yeah. So one guy took the class, he played every single Beatles guitar lick, correct notes, correct rhythm, but it sounded like Jimi Hendrix was playing it because he grew up with his sensibilities always playing Hendrix. Mm -hmm. So you have to broaden your style. You have to mm -hmm. broaden your ears and you want to play like different people just to get a taste of what it feels like to strike the string that way. We're playing a plucked instrument. It's easy to play fast and sloppy. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, easy yeah. to play beautifully. Yeah. You've got to take care and you've got to listen. And like Pat Metheny is always telling folks, he puts himself in the audience and plays to himself. So I'm always trying to impress myself and I'm trying to get better at all these things, better at engineering and better gear and better microphones. And it's like, I want the advantage because my desire is so great and I just love it so much and I want all the support I can get, right? So those classes never existed before, but they exist now and some other folks are teaching them, which is nice. and. Um, I really love working with folks individually now, helping them as they write with their own music, all the different parts, maybe arranging, production, and artist skills. Like a friend of mine's a great musician, Kate Chadbourne, has a fantastic web page and wonderful YouTube channel. And she has a, I, even I have a playlist on my YouTube channel of her videos called Creative Hurts and How to Heal Them. You need to know how to survive as an artist and you need to know how to protect your heart and to, to grow and to know that what you're doing is worthwhile. And it's all up to you. It's all in your own head, right? So we put value on what we do or we devalue what we do. And you have to just take a nap when you feel like taking a nap and play your heart out and do it sincerely and in an authentic way when you're ready to play, you know? Yeah, yeah. okay, this basically summarizes this one question that I had, well, since since you made base, uh, what from what I get is you made your passion your, to your profession. So, and I think a lot of people want to do that. And I wanted to ask, like, what what would your advice as a professor teaching music be to young people that want to do the same, basically? Wait, you know, you you don't want to be silly, I guess, and neglectful. You've got to feed yourself, you've got to oh, feed course. whoever you're responsible for, you've got to take care of your, you need a roof over your head, of course, you've got to take care of the basics. But in your moments, five minutes here, ten minutes there, you've got to follow what you love, you've got to feed your soul, you've got to do what matters to you. So people find ways, you know, they just get up early and they write their novel. And for me, the creative process isn't a choice, it's not like, well, sometimes it's there and sometimes it isn't. It's a creative muscle. And if you learn to expect it, we're all individuals attached to this universal intelligence. You know, no matter what field and work you do, you have access to infinite intelligence. You can ask 
George Harrison, <laughs> what should I play here? You can ask Paul McCartney. You can ask Stevie Wonder. You can bring the great ideas to you if you take a moment and think and open yourself up and grab those ideas and let them flow to you. So I don't believe in writer's block. I don't believe in creativity block. I think the song knows what it's supposed to be. And you know what you want to be doing in this life, right? Mm. So it's your life. Spend it doing what you desire to do. And enjoy and love what you love. And don't worry what other people think about it, you know? It's not about, you know, all the things that everybody I'm crying, says. Actually, actually. Well, you're, making, you're making Giovanni cry here. You're, you're too inspired. Actually, you're, you're not, we're not even joking. Well, it's about the real stuff. You know, I mean, that's, that's why we come back to the Beatles so often, because they thought it was a laugh. You know, they thought they'd make a record, and I'd be like, woohoo, we made a record, or get a couple of better gigs. They didn't know it was going to go on for 58 years like this. They weren't expecting that. They were just doing what they loved. And So what I get from them when I say I learned everything, it was how to arrange, how to produce, how to play, how to write, how to sing, how to have fun, but also uh, optimism. I mean, Paul McCartney is like the greatest example of optimism. And he's on the planet with everybody else. He's had things that have broken his heart, but he's found a way to keep going. That's what we all need to learn is how you can pick yourself up and reboot constantly. And we all have each other to lean on. It's going to be all right, you know? So it's that kind of thing. It's it's like there really is really good love and energy out there, and that's what you want to tap into. None of that, whatever else happens in the world, can eclipse that. Love wins, you know? Love is the best thing. Yeah. And... Um, there isn't an evil force out there. There are just people, and people can be great, and people can be, you know, <laughs> not <opposite>. great. <laughs> and, it, and you will attract the right people. You will stay in the circles that keep you safe and help you uh, make a career and have a life and have fun. And the only thing you control is you right now and your energy, right? So how you can react. So I'm just learning from Brene Brown and all these wonderful people. Oprah Winfrey has great teachings on on things, of course, Maya Angelou, and uh, it just goes on and on, Jack Canfield, uh, Tony Robbins, Mel Robbins, it's just wonderful people, Brooke Castillo, to get life lessons. I've always been upset about that with school. There's always like a million years you've got to spend your life in school, and nobody teaches you how to take care of your money, they don't teach you how to stay well, <laughs> they don't teach you how to uh, control your thoughts and emotions and, and uh, keep going, right? We all need how to you know, like, check out all the people I was mentioning because they're just amazing and they give you the skills that you're looking for. So there's not, it, there's never been a choice of give up music. Like, I've never understood anybody who thought they loved music and then gave up yeah. music. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with having a day job and doing your music. Whatever you feel less stressed to make money from is what you should be doing and do the things that you love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Giovanni, Giovanni is going to be crying. He's going to be covered in tears by the end of this interview, but it's all good. You cannot see him, but he's right there, really touched. Um, oh, I see, I got to show me Giovanni because yeah, he's, he's right here. He's right here. Yeah, right. Come on. <laughs> Thank you for your last oh, yeah, word. Actually. Yeah, he was, he's just like oh, he's, it's, he's, it's he's, the meaning of all, all, all life. Yeah, yeah like, uh, as an artist, um, you know. Uh, I wanted I wanted to ask one more thing about the Beatles, uh, Lauren. Uh, we were we were checking your your uh, your videos. I think it's on this one was on Instagram. Uh, we were all like really flabbergasted, you know. If you're you have this uh, really psychedelic looking, I think it's a Stratocaster. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, it was beautiful. It kind of it kind of looks like uh, this uh, this Eric Clapton Stratocaster. Can you show me? Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, no, he had a gift. What's anyway, it? anyway, but we were listening to that to the video, and then we heard that like. The, the tone of your guitar, we could, I mean, of course, maybe that was not what you were going for, but we noticed it, it sounded a lot like uh, George Harrison's late Beatles stuff, like around Abbey Road, uh, that, that really smooth, velvety guitar, more in the high mids there. Um, how, how, but, but that's the thing, but this, you, you basically already answered uh, that, this, this question before, but how much, was, how big of an, impl of an influence were the Beatles to you? In your own music, you know, in your own like, do you go? Do you do you think like, oh, how would George Harrison go about this this lick, or or do you try to follow Lauren Passarelli on? The the Beatles and James Taylor, my two biggest musical influences, besides Stevie Wonder and all those early great guitar players like Johnny Smith and Tal Farlow and 
Charlie Christian. Uh, just, it was just people who had a really nice touch on guitar. So you can have all the same gear, the same guitar, the same amplifier, all the same pedals, yeah. all that stuff. And it's not going to sound like the person you like until you get in to the touch of how you strike the string and what your fingers are doing on the fretting side, whatever side you do it on. Mm -hmm. That's where the sound happens. And um, that George guitar, really, uh, he just took a regular Stratocaster and painted it with day glow paints and his wife's nail polish, you know. So it happened to be around the time where Fender was saying, we're going to release the Rocky George Harrison Strat paint job. And it was like $7,000 in the 90s. I was like, wow, for a bad paint job, they're going to charge all that money, you know. I mean, they would do a better job than George did. But, you know, I thought... He can't paint, I can't paint, I'll paint mine, you know. <laughs> so you, you painted it yourself um, then? You did, what? You painted the guitar yourself? Yeah, yeah. And ah, it, looks, it, it looks, looks really cool, looks very really, nice and done. It looks yeah. really globby. Yeah. Yeah, I can show it to you. It looks really yeah. globby. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, no, it looks really cool. Because it reminds me of George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Please show us the it looks really cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 looks nice. Uh, no, we were we were talking about this guitar for like roughly an hour here when we started. <laughs> uh, um, you want to do the next question? Um, Wait, it has the guitar. The guitar. Oh, yes. Yeah. We cannot. We cannot see. My nineteen seventy. My Now we see. Now we see. My dad got me for you know graduating from uh, grammar school. <laughs> ah. It was off white at the time, and then it turned a million colors because of all the clothes I wore uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. so I stripped it and uh, 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 so it's really a facade you see yeah, 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 yeah. Not in federal, is it? and uh, so then I, you know I just painted the can, front can of it closer, because yeah. it was 2001 and I couldn't sleep because I knew George was really sick and it was just heartbreaking that it's like you know it's you know Deepak Chopra come on you can heal you can get better you know like I was just like there can't be a world without George yeah. and John. It just doesn't make any sense. So, uh, I I painted the guitar instead of uh, being uh, too upset about it. Wow, wow, wow. And I, that's one thing I always love to, to remember, is that I was on the planet when all four of them were here. Okay, now, now you're just making me really jealous. Because <laughs> I was never in the planet when the, when the four of well, them were here. It was here. so much fun, you know, yeah. so much fun. I see. Wow, but I, I was I was never imagined when when we were discussing the questions we were gonna ask you, we could never imagine that this this guitar. We were all thinking the guitar looked really cool, but we could never imagine that it had such a cool story behind it. And and, and George passing. I also remember I was a little kid, but I remember I got really sad when George died in uh, two thousand one. Um, well, I really miss it too, right? Yeah. I started taking guitar lessons in nineteen sixty nine, and they were already breaking up. Yeah. Right. So that following April nineteen seventy, yeah. that was it. And I remember my guitar teacher, Lou Sabini, just a lovely guy who's still teaching guitar lessons here and there. He's still <laughs> in teaching, yeah. New Jersey, Paramus, New Jersey. Wow. He uh, said, well, now you're going to have to buy four albums instead of one. That, in, in, in April, <laughs> in April, in April, in April 70, really, yeah. That's what people forget, is like some people just know the Beatles use, the, the magic continues because yeah. those folks didn't stop creating, right? Yeah. So that's why you've got to keep creating your own music. You don't realize. Mm -hmm. Who you're influencing and who's inspired because they've seen you play or or write and it gives everybody else permission mm -hmm. i can do that oh you can think like that oh you can be open-minded oh you can be loving oh that's a cool way to be i don't have to punch that guy out right you can, it's like yeah, there yeah. are options and it's it's just a wonderful thing that these folks were more than just songwriters you yeah. know so dude yeah, Do, yeah. um no. Um, yeah, um, I or we also s saw that you in, in January you basically tried to challenge yourself from what I got from your social media um, with with writing songs. Can you tell us something about? Does it help? Does did you do something like that, for example, to help you uh, to challenge yourself uh, to keep your creativity like? Uh, the juice is going. Yeah, like the juice is going, <laughs> or um, was there some other kind of background, or was it just an idea that you spontaneously had, or something like that? 
for some reason it breaks up when you talk, Julian. So I'm not oh. sure what is the thing that inspired me or helps me. What what is the thing uh, where actually? Um, you cha I think you challenged yourself you t with writing uh. a song each uh, day in January or something like that, maybe. What was the last part of that? I challenged myself. What? Um, to write a song every day in January. Oh, 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 yeah, that was a, a new thing. I remember being a kid seeing that I had written almost one song a month. And I thought, what happened to these two months? Did you not feel creative? We can write a song a month. Mm -hmm. So I used to do that for years. And then I started writing two songs a month because I would sweat all month. Like, what am I going to write about? And like be midnight, coming on midnight, this is the night before. And I'd finally squeak a song in. And then the next week I'd be so inspired by that new song, I'd write another one. I said, ah, I see, you could really write two songs a month. You probably could write a heck of a lot more if you didn't have to do all kinds of other things. Mm -hmm. So it's been a while since I've been on a writing schedule. Uh, I've been trying to record the backlog of songs I have since I was a kid. And uh, Kate, that I mentioned before, the great musician here in my town, she was saying, let's write that song a month that you're always doing. And I was like... Okay, I haven't done that in a while, but that's like almost your own little pressure, you know? Yeah. All right, all right. And um, then for January, I thought, why don't I just try to see it, how many songs I can write? Because uh, it would be just interesting to see. I mean, that whole Get Back special is just like the most amazing thing going, right? So I've oh. seen it three times. <laughs> I've seen it three times too, yeah. How awesome was that? I want, I want to see it from beginning to end all in one day. Yeah. Because I watched each one three times as each of them happened, you know. Yeah. And so I thought, they did that in January. We're coming on January. What can I do in January to inspire myself? And see, that's another thing Paul does. Throughout the whole thing, he's going, we need a payoff. We need a goal. We need to, a schedule. We need a plan. And I feel better in my own life if I've got something to look forward to, something to plan, something to work towards, mm -hmm. because otherwise it feels like my brain's going to eat itself. Mm -hmm. You know, my brain, your, everybody's brain is trying to figure stuff out and make sense out of chaos. And the world is going to stay chaos because that's the giant buffet, as my favorite teachers, Abraham Hicks, say, right? The teachings of Abraham Hicks. Life is a giant buffet. And you don't have to rid the world of all the things you hate. You just have to put on your plate what matters to you. We don't have to have wars about it. We don't have to be cutthroat about things. Just pay attention to what you love. That's the answer. And then everybody's happy. So nobody's ever going to all be happy or all not be depressed at the same time, whatever. But the fact that you can choose what your brain thinks about is the most powerful thing we have. Right? So I want to think about the things that thrill me. I want to think about being able to get more tegla gear. I want to think about all the fun stuff in songwriting and recording that I enjoy so much. And that excites me. That makes me feel good. I want to think about the people I love, you know? So to have a goal, like I want to finish this song or I really want to see if I can make that bridge better. All I have to do is make sure I love every word every melody note and every chord. When there's a little part that I go, that's corny, that's embarrassing, or I don't like it, or I can do better than that. I want to bring it up to my own standard. All I have to please is me. So I have a lot of freedom in this. Nice. Nice. Um, uh, should, I, should I do the last Beatles question? Okay. <laughs> okay, um, this is the last Beatles question, not necessarily the last question. Um, okay, so there's no denying, at least from, uh, I think I think we have a good understanding among us here, the Beatles were the best band that has ever existed. Um, the thing is, but, of course, it has been 50 years, um, you know, a little more, right? Um, and a lot has changed in music. So in these last 50 years, uh, we have seen rock change itself, you know, it went to the progressive hard rock, punk rock, and then the 80s came, hip hop started, blah, blah, blah. Now, in 2022, we could basically say that guitar-based music is not as big as it was during the Beatles, basically. That's um, very disappointing, and I know what you mean. Exactly. Because I was teaching a pop-rock guitar styles class, and feeling bad in the 80s when I was teaching the class, 
hey, why don't you bring in songs that you're listening to? Because a lot of these that I'm bringing in are from the 60s and 70s, and I know you've got some really great new artists out there. Who are you listening to? Who are the guitar players? They're like, they nobody's didn't. playing guitar. Yeah. It happened in the 90s. It happened in the 2000s. It's happening in the 2020s. It's like people have forgotten how cool the guitar is. Think about it. There's only a few instruments on the whole planet that can play more than one note at the same time yeah. and can play chords and melody at the same time. Guitar, piano, marimba, vibes, maybe mandolin, sometimes yeah. a little bit on bass. You know, it's like people have been playing less and less rhythm guitar, which is mm -hmm. some of the coolest stuff going. Listen to the Doobie Brothers and uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, some of those folks that played with Stevie Wonder. Holy cow, rhythm guitar is so much fun. And people aren't playing rhythm everybody yeah. wants to play lead on guitar and if they're playing it like it's a flute like yeah. it's a monophonic instrument yeah. it's like it can do so much more yeah. you know it's so much fun to play yeah. all the different things that guitar can offer so on my youtube channel i like to show all kinds of different things that you can do with guitar i'm still totally in love with guitar like i was when i was two years old and my mom gave me a little plastic one <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I share your opinion as well. I also think it's it's a little sad how yeah, people are not... You guys, you guys play as well? Definitely not nearly as good as you, but something. Yeah. <laughs> I only play e-bass. Just a little bit every day, we all get better. Yeah. yeah. There's a guy in the chat that says, I want to learn guitar also and all the... It's uh, electronic music, but it's something amazing. It's really... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, we have, uh, I, I think you have, you had, you had another question. Mm, I think there is, yeah. Um, how do I put it? Um, I think, yeah, you also were, um, I think you're, yeah, we said in the beginning you're a published author, basically. And I think you, um, published uh, some guitar lessons, of course, and also a book, uh, a book about, uh, how, do they, how are they called in English? Dachshund. Dach 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 yeah. Exactly. Do you own a Dachshund? Oh, Dachshunds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. I've had the pleasure of knowing four miniature Dachshunds so in my good. life. I yeah. have two right now. The other two have moved on. But no. yeah, I love miniature dachshunds. I don't know why they're just adorable, but they're so smart, you know. They're, they're yeah. thought of as the lawyers of the breeds of dogs because they're just so smart and funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, back in the day, I think they were used also, at least in Germany, uh, for fox hunting and these things. So they yes. really intelligent uh, dogs and things. We, um, Badger hound. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. since you're also a public, uh, published author, we, uh, or at least I was wondering, uh, but I think the others also, um, how you balance between different projects, because this can also be sometimes overwhelming if you have, for example, yeah, if you have too many projects simultaneously. Or different or, projects or, or yeah. in different ways, well, so music, yeah, or music, or maybe painting, or maybe yeah. writing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, another, I don't plan out too far ahead, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not very good at that kind of visionary, where do I want to be in five years, where will I be in ten years, I don't know, but I'm going to keep imagining good things, you know. Uh, Abraham Hicks always says, um, you're never going to get it all done, right, so it's like trying to clean out your inbox or trying to straighten up you can keep it going but everything is evolving and moving all the time like you were doing your hands like this before and I, I, it reminded me that we're all alchemists we're here to play with energy we're here to create the world we want together you know and make it a better place and you do that even with the chords and notes because we all have the same chords and notes so what are you going to make with it yeah. you know yeah. and uh, one more Maybe a bit more Taylor specific question. Uh, did you did you search for the VTRC um, that you got uh, specifically, or was it uh, why why did you choose the VTRC? Taylor? Yeah. yeah, or the VTRC basically. I loved the light blue even better than the darker blue. <laughs> <laughs> so when I saw that one, it was like I want blue. I want the blue, the right blue, the blue box thing. And I thing. want. I want pro gear in my racks, you know, because I'm always wanting like a real recording studio, you know. Um, it was just so fun to say, well, 
I'm not going to just go through the interface, although the Apollo interfaces are, are incredible. I mean, mm. I didn't realize when I got logic that it had built in uh, effects and plugins that I didn't have to buy anything yeah. else. <laughs> I didn't realize when I bought the UA Apollos that a bunch came with it. You know, like it was just, I just stumbled into all these things because I was using, you know, like dinky cassette machines, you know, like the old little cassettes mm -hmm. bouncing back and forth and playing live from machine to machine. And I still have that first tape. It's like 14 tracks of noise. <laughs> so when digital started coming around after my half inch eight track and then eight ads, uh, went to Logic in 2005, I loved the cleanliness of that. I loved no tape hiss and no artifacts and problems of things that weren't the music. When the Beatles went to CD, oh my God, to put the headphones on and listen to them talking yeah. and to listen to the mixes and the music and every remastered wonderful that comes out since, it's like Paul Hicks. Have you, have you checked oh, the, the latest like, anniversary editions? I would love editions. to study with Paul Hicks. He's so amazing, you know, it's like, wow, it's like you're right there in the session with them, you know, it's just beautiful. Did you, did you, did so, you, yeah, I mean, did, you, did you have the chance to check the, the Beatles anniversary editions with the new mixes of Abbey Road and Sgt. Pepper's and the White Album? Yes, yes, yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, I still have memories of hearing them, so I go, that's different, that's yeah, yeah. different, you know, and sometimes... I don't know who's done them in the past, but like on Past Masters Volume One, it's like they forgot to bring the harmonica back in on the on the fade out. It's like, where's the rest of the song? You know, <laughs> or or deciding that ding 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 a ding ding a ding 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 a ding ding a ding. Like for I'm looking through you was yeah. a mistake. It's like who said that was a mistake? I hope Paul told you it was a mistake <laughs> because we're used to hearing too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like why are you changing history now? You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I know what you, I have. Kind of the same feeling with all because I'm uh, into into like 70s, 90s reggae music, Jamaica, and these things. When uh, and there are also some remaster versions of these old tunes there, and I sometimes think they are missing something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's an incredible job. I wouldn't want to have all those responsibilities. Yeah, it's yeah, too yeah. much to remember for sure. Mm. But, you know, getting back to the VTRC, it's beautiful, yeah. it's blue, it does wonderful things, you know? That's you can blue. play with knobs and buttons and switches, which I've always loved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can hear the sound and why it's changing and go, oh no, that's not it, a little bit more of this, oh, a little bit less of that, uh oh, so that's what that's called, oh, you know. A lot of people start off playing and doing things by ear and they didn't know what yeah. each button was going to do. But I have to tell my students that all the time. You've got this beautiful electric guitar. It's got three, sometimes four pickups. You've got all these knobs and switches. They just take it out of the case and just ready to go. It's like, why don't you see what those knobs and switches yeah. do? Yeah. And then why don't you see what your amp does in relation to those? Mm. And then why don't you see what your interface knobs do? And then if you're going to use a piece of gear like the VTRC, wait till you see what that does. Holy mm. mackerel. You know, you all of a sudden start sounding more and more professional and you've got a clean signal that actually has some act to it. You know, it's yeah. like it's got a roundness, it's got tone, it's got body, it's got heft, it's got importance. You know, mm. those are the things that we don't realize uh, goes into all these professional recordings. You know, mm. when you see all the gear and uh, some of the wonderful things they're doing, even uh, Leanne Unger has said to me many times, look, you know, the kind of level of gear that some folks are using, we're never going to achieve that, <laughs> you know? So thankfully, Tegler makes these things that are affordable for us and, and, and we can play too. Yeah, we try. Yeah, everybody's welcome, jump in. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think a good follow-up for, now, now that we're talking a little bit more about gear, um, we were checking your, your um, again, again the, the video with the, with the psychedelic uh, strato, um, but then we, we noticed that you were using a tape recorder, an actual tape recorder. And nowadays, uh, recording on tape is a little bit prohibitive, really, because, uh, because of the, the cost, it's, it's actually exp expensive, right? Uh, and, and so the big majority of the producers, they just choose to record only digitally. Uh, what was the, the reasoning, your, your reasoning behind uh, using the tape? Uh, well, because when I grew up, 
in the 70s and you saw pictures of recording studios, there's the dachshunds, um, it was always tape recorders and mixing consoles. So it's like, part of me is like, but that's what a studio is supposed to look like, you know, mm -hmm. which is silly. But I was really on my way to welcome to 1979. I was going to go down to uh, Nashville and visit that studio. And I was really thinking for my 60th birthday, I might just plunge, get a really nice console and get a 24 track two inch machine just because, just because, you yeah. know, and <laughs> I would also we got just to. because why not? <laughs> just because why not? Yeah. I know most of this we don't need. It's not for need. It's for fun. It's for pleasure. It's for your longevity. It's for your energy. It's to keep you alive. It's to keep your heart singing, right? you got to do things that inspire you. For me, I'm sorry, it's not diamonds. It's gear. <laughs> <laughs> But... <laughs> the favorite I, gift I, always. <laughs> looking all over the place for a, a tape machine that you could have fun with. And I used to have the Tascam 38 with the half-inch reels. Mm -hmm. I found the MS-16. Not even housed in big washing machine size giant thing. But I thought, where am I going to put that in the room? It's, it's just, it fits in the rack. It's the same machine. It goes right in the rack and it's yeah. one inch tape. So yeah. it's just exciting to see it again and to have fun with it. So I'm recording some of my old songs to the uh, MS-16 and then throwing everything into Logic and mixing in the box a little mm -hmm. bit too. But uh, going through my VTRC, going to tape, getting some nice signals and... Uh, Yeah. I'm not enjoying the tape this, I have to say, but <laughs> <laughs> it is really fun to even just hear the sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Absolutely. And, the, and it's like, at first, when I thought about it coming, I thought, do you realize how fast you've gotten with digital? Do you realize how instant access you have and not random access or sequential access? You have to wait for everything to rewind. Do you know how much longer this is going to take? I thought, what's the rush? This, yeah, there's yeah, no exactly. rush. This isn't about, I have to finish blah, 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 by blah, blah, blah. I have no deadlines with that. It's, yeah, without gear, no life. Yes, Daniel. Um, so it's, it's for the fun. It's for more buttons. It's for more knobs and switches. And uh, I'll probably still be mixing in logic, maybe doing some sure, sure. summing through some other gears. I do the I.O. a lot, but then I print some of those results. Mm. And... Uh, Yeah, do nice. it all for the fun. Do it all for yeah. your your health. All right, I think we're now talking nearly an hour already. So an hour, yeah. yeah. So okay, I am. It looks like ten minutes actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we can go for um, the whole night. I think we <laughs> don't want to steal any more of your time. I think because we do have one very important yeah, question. Yeah, there's of course one yeah. question one. left if you want. Should, do, should I do it? Should, should you do it? Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Last but not least, then. Uh, very important. What are you working on the moment? Uh, you know what? Any projects that will be released in the near future? Anything? What, what's cooking up in Lauren Passarelli's world? Well, I released an EP called The Highest Moon. Uh, no, it was called Mystery. Mystery? The second EP is going to be called The Highest Moon. Mystery is out already. I'm working on The Highest Moon. And it might be a full length album because I wrote 23 songs in January that I really uh -huh. like. And I have all those to record now. So I've recorded a couple of basic tracks, some vocals. I have a lot more arranging and things to do with that. But I'm always teaching, thinking, writing, inviting folks to play with me, <laughs> uh, trying to collaborate, do more things, find it exciting. And there's always new songs to record and all older songs to record. So I thought January is the songwriting month, write new ones. February... Let me try to record some of my older mm. songs, the ones that have never seen the light of day, they've mm. never been released on tape, and maybe mix in the box, but we'll see. Maybe I'll do a couple of mixes actually on um, the tape machine itself as mm. well. I mean, you know, mix to something else. I still have those digital two tracks and things that we used to have. Rafa was emailing me. He told me that he actually has a second Pro Tools rig, so he'll mix through his console, to all of his gear, to another rig, you know? So wow. that's, there's, a, there's a way you can do it. <laughs> so many ways. I think he was also telling me, too, there's, there's no one way to do anything. Every song, every project, you approach yeah. it in a different way. Yeah, that is, so. that, that is very, very true. And yeah, yeah. you should always remember that. So there's no formula, right? Yeah. Yeah, and there's no wrong. 
You know, yeah. I mean, we might do things a little odd or a little take too long, and it doesn't work for somebody because they have to crank these things out. Like Matt Rufino, he's got a million deadlines and things that have to happen because he he works with live TV, and then he's got to get things turned around quickly and stuff. But regardless of where you are in your deadlines, you know, you want either a great workflow or a fun workflow or a, a quality workflow. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why Tegler and their blue gear come in for me because <laughs> I love the sound. You know? yeah. Like I said, I heard that I heard the reverb the other day on on this one YouTube channel where the guy was showing the reverb, and I was like this. <laughs> oh, holy cow. It was, it's just delicious. The yeah. sounds you guys have been creating on this work is is, is just uh, fantastic. Yeah. Like yeah. ice cream for your ears, you know? It's just delicious. Yeah. Oh, I hope I remember to say Hello that to our developer who uh, designed that reverb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to he's, he's gonna be happy to yeah. hear it, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, by the way, are there any questions from yes. the chat or something? Do we have questions from the chat? Uh, well, let me just keep questions. Let me um, just quickly check. Take a look here. Okay, okay. We got a lot oh. of uh, positive comments. With, uh, okay. Um, da, 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 da. okay. I see. Need more recording t shirts. <laughs> we need a Tegler t shirt. <laughs> and we need. Uh, more Beetle t-shirts. More Beetle t-shirts. I, I need definitely more Beetle t-shirts. I don't have enough. I'm still waiting for well, this. I'm, I'm waiting for this revolver blanket that I bought. Are, are you talking about for yourself? Yes. For myself, of course. Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. not? That's fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is that right? It just came up in my key here. Okay. <laughs> we don't. We don't really have questions apparently. Yeah. Uh, if 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 someone who's uh, yeah. If you have any questions, you can post yeah. them. Uh, uh, do you have any questions for us, Lauren? Oh, yeah. Well, what are you guys planning next? How's that EQ coming? What name? Oh, oh you're going to reveal the name eventually, right? Uh, yeah. it's, the name has been revealed? It's, it's been revealed. It's been revealed. Yeah. It's the Myth EQ 500. Actually, it was the day of the Lauren Builder, 5th of February. Yeah, the first of February. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we had a lot of answers, uh, a lot of... A lot of um, a lot of people were trying to, to name the EQ. We settled on Meet EQ 500. It's coming in the second quarter. We're very excited about it. We have a lot of pre-orders already. Uh, if you want to awesome. get yours, maybe make a pre-order, you know, <laughs> just saying. Um, and yeah, we're, we're really excited. Uh, our workshop is working board. non-stop to, to get everything out. Yeah. As well. I want the Cranborn ADAT. Say again? If I get the Cranborn ADAT, I can get a couple of your EQs. Oh, yeah. 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 Need to get the housing yeah. to start on the 500 studios myself. A question came through: What's my favorite Beatles song? It's too hard to choose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like saying your favorite Beatle. I've learned so much from yeah. all four of them. I just yeah, enjoy yeah. them so much. Yeah. Um, I like. Um, they said, "What kinds of gear have changed my workflow?" Certainly, the VTRC. Uh, any piece of gear changes my quest, workflow. Yeah. You know, nice. <laughs> it's, it's like a new thing to I.O. or a new thing to go through live as I'm recording mm -hmm. and it certainly uh, gives me more possibilities. Yeah. I just love the tone and the changes that can happen with those various things. Yeah. Okay. Um, that, uh, what is it, the most quoted song? Song of all time. Oh, I, know, I know this one. I know this one. I know this one. <laughs> Come on. The most covered song of all time. I know that one. Oh, right. Yeah. They say it's yesterday. Yesterday. But you know what's really funny? Yeah, when I was in a Beatles tribute band, yeah. me and Ringo, who is a great Ringo, wanted to do more George and Ringo songs throughout the show. Yeah. We played two 50-minute sets, and we did 54 songs a night every time we played. And if we played a few places in the same area, the same state, Portsmouth, Maine, Massachusetts, Connecticut, you know, it's like, well... Some people might come to the same show. We better change, and we change out twenty-five songs and play twenty-five different ones. We need like hundred nineteen songs, every little nook and cranny, every little bit, with the exact sound and the exact inflection. And the other guys didn't want us to do "Here Comes the Sun" and something, or "Here Comes the Sun" even, and um, yeah, I think it was "Here Comes the Sun" and something every show. It was like one or the other. And it was like. No, no. These are great songs, you know. It's like there's never enough. They should be in the show. Like never like too much George. The ratio wasn't that way with e equal songs, so we should not change the, the ratio. It's like 
but the audience is not playing those games. The audience just wants to hear the songs they love. So what were the two most first downloaded, most downloaded songs on iTunes when the Beatles finally went to iTunes? Here Comes the Sun and Something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because the whole world wanted more of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More George. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> more George, that's, that's it. Um, and since we're plugging George, you know, can we have some decent pictures of George? Can yeah. somebody make some beautiful t-shirts of him? Yeah. He was a beautiful man. Yeah. They all were adorable. Like, why do they have the worst pictures of George? There's no George mugs. There's no George t-shirts. There's yeah. no George posters. It's like everybody waited too long. Even Martin Scorsese waited 10 years too long to make yeah. the damn movie we couldn't wait to see. We were very upset. I'll try to start a movement well, here. George, all, take a little to die. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to start. That's so funny. So, Gabriel, how's your British accent? Have you got a Beatles accent a little bit, bro? No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm from Brazil, actually. I, my accent is a, is a little bit from everywhere. Yeah, I'm a Frank, I'm a Frankenstein English speaker. Yeah. Ah, very good, very good. A, a bit, a piece from the, from the, this guy, you know, and then, yeah, my English is a, a mix. And, and which, part of, which part of Italy is Giovanni from? I'm from Napoli. Napolitano. From Napoli. Napolitano. Hey, that's one of my CDs where that they say my family has come from. There you go. Oh, I've there got you to go. go to Italy. I have got to go to Italy. So that's what I started to say about the tape recorders. I was supposed to go down to uh, Nashville and go to the beautiful studio, Welcome to 1979, mm. and uh, the pandemic came so I didn't go mm. yeah. yeah you have to come just come yeah. <laughs> get, get the, the, yeah. the eggplant parmigiana so in Napoli I hear beautiful things about Brazil too and, and Julian right. where are you from I'm from Sao Paulo yeah. which is also a very Italian city well, in Brazil yeah. <laughs> yeah and Julian's from where I'm the boring one I'm from Germany <laughs> <laughs> Right, right here in Germany. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I've been li yeah, living abroad a few years, but yeah. nothing, nothing uh, special. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, just like Zoom has those settings for sound where you have to take it off, suppress background noise, you have to put it on low. It sounds like Julian is a quieter speaker, and so every word comes out like a cell phone. I, 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 oh, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, maybe, maybe. Because I, try, I try to speak loud. Hitting. It's compressing you out. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. This, this is the first interview. No. Yeah. We, 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 we are happy to have you, better. but we're also we're sorry better. that many was the first one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, have to, we have to improve. Well, I was born on the 1st of February, and I'm the first born in my family, so, I don't know, been number one for a long time. There you go, <laughs> number one. <laughs> and you like the number one band. I really, <laughs> it was so kind of you guys to ask, and I really appreciate it, and I love my tag with you, but... I had no idea we were going to do this. This was just so much fun. I thank you all so much. Yeah, thank you too. Thank it was you. Thank so you inspiring. Really. It was really cool. Really, really yeah. cool. Yeah. Really cool. Give us a call when you we come to Berlin. Um, you know, the beer, the beer is on us. Come visit, come, come, come visit the, the, the Tegula oh, audio suite. That would be so fun because yeah. I've never been anywhere near Germany. Yeah. That'd be so cool. You should come visit. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Coming closer to the mic would help them. Yeah. If it's flashing through, you need go, you guys need to come. Through. That's what I was disappointed. I thought we were doing a Zoom thing that yeah. we put on here after, so you could see the studio and all that. Yeah. And it's like, I, no, I got to stay right here. Nobody's going to hear anything because yeah. I really talk quietly as well. Yeah, it would be the idea to bring you know the conversation on Instagram for have more live reaction. And yeah. I think the guys they like it. They like it. We actually also to interact people we live. Have, uh, we do have a big response. Right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm not even having yeah, a good Giovanni, idea. Yeah, Giovanni sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's behind, yeah. Yeah. I'm shy, my and he, He's an Italian, spe Italian speaker, you know, he, have the, he has this natural, you know, enunciation quality going on. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to thank everybody who's thank popped you, on. Thank you, Lauren. Much appreciated. It's a huge company, and so, of yeah. course, people would pop on, but nobody knows who I am, so it's very nice that they, they're here. I just want to say hello to everybody and keep on keeping on. I mean, if you noticed... With Rick Rubin, Paul McCartney's famous words were, uh, uh, carry, it, was, it was like carry on, right? Keep moving forward. He was yeah. saying, um, <laughs> uh, what was he saying? I don't remember. Uh, I, I, I saw I saw the Rick Rubin and Paul thing, yeah, but I don't remember now. It's like, it's like you just got to keep on. All the way to the top, to the top, top of the toppers, isn't it? 
Say what? To the top. We're going to the top of the topless. They would say something like that. What? Wasn't it? I don't remember. Oh, no, you're talking about uh, we want to be like the John Lennon quote? Yeah, the that's right. That's John. That was John, yeah. The toppermost of the poppermost. That's, yeah, that's the one. The thank you. Thank you. Yes. Look, you uh, see Beatles expert, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, this was something like move forward constantly, like keep keep mm -hmm. going in your life. Like when you look back, just look back at the good things yeah. and be fueled by the love and remembrance of that. Like don't look back to just make yourself crazy because your brain will just take you down, yeah. you know. You don't want to think of all the things that have gone wrong. You want to think of all the things that have gone right. It's too hard. <laughs> hmm. yeah. Lauren, from our side, you. thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Um, everybody, uh, go check Lauren's stuff. Everything that she does is amazing. Uh, we we, ha we have loved this interview. It was amazing. Uh, we're gonna Tomorrow, I'm thank sure we're going to be listening to a lot of your music while we're working here in our office hours. And thank you very much. Hey, thank, thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. That's what the quote was. Forge forward constantly. Yeah. That's Paul McCartney for you. Forge forward and constantly. And thank you guys so much, Giovanni. Thank you to Laura. Julian. Uh, thank it was you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's very nice to see you. Guys. I love you. Thank you so much. We love thank you too. Thank you, everybody <laughs> who tuned in. And uh, that's amazing. Make thank music. You, Lauren. Yeah. Always. We After tried. this conversation, yes. I, 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 know, I, I had for this evening. I will go home. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I will go home and turn on my new machine at the work because yeah, I did all the plans. But now I feel the necessity to do something. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Be well. Thank you. Thank you.